Okay, let's move into part two. Dive into your uh, particular folder here. Uh, right now, this uh, file called Ninja Flip is just an exact copy of this uh, Ninja Start file. So what I'm going to do is just open up this one in a sec. But uh, if you want to continue off of uh, what you were working on in part one, that's fine because uh, actually that's what we're going to uh, keep doing here in the uh, tutorial. But there are a couple elements uh, in this start file that uh, you'll want to uh, copy and drag in. And let's talk about those right now. Let me get this file open and moved into the screen cap area. Okay, there we are. And uh, that, uh, well, the first thing to bring in will be go over here into your library, and then uh, there's a background called Space Background. Let's just drag that uh, from the library, and let's try to get it onto our layer that is already called Background. So it's probably best to just select that blank keyframe first, and then let's just drag it right on there. All right, uh, what I'm going to do actually is, let me back up to about 50%, so you can see that this is a, this is a pretty big JPEG, and uh, I'm first going to get it, I guess, just kind of um, right on an x-axis of zero, and let's go uh, negative 500 to start. Uh, once it's there, I'm going to convert it to a symbol. Generally a good idea for your... Uh, well, anything you're going to move around, but uh, even the JPEGs, I think it's a good idea to do this with. And we're going to call this space background. Why not? Okay. And just to kind of give you an idea of where we're going here, we'll have this guy, you know, do his thing where he just kind of zips up that way. Then we'll cut to this, and we'll have him just kind of shoot up even further. We'll pan this background uh, downwards, uh, so it, you know, kind of gives you the Impression that he's going up really quick. Uh, we'll slow it down a bit and then we'll have him, the ninja, just kind of uh, sail downwards, I guess in typical anime fashion where there's a little bit of a pause there uh, to accentuate, I guess, how, how much further he's falling down. We'll get his robes kind of flapping around a bit. That's a pretty common thing too you see in cartoons. And then what we'll do is have him, uh, I guess, do a flip or two and then uh, fall back down and we'll see. Uh, how much time we got left in this lesson after that. Okay, so let's uh, let's start with the background. We'll kind of have this uh, give us, I guess, our pacing uh, for what is ahead. So I think it's generally a good idea to, if you're gonna switch scenes like this, uh, in the viewer's mind, it's kind of an abrupt thing anyway, just you know, cutting from one background to the next. So I, I'd say give them just a second or a half a second to absorb that, oh, we, we've switched uh, scenes here. All right, so what we'll do is uh, just hit F6 right here. Okay, so you got about this much space before we start doing anything. At about this point, we'll we'll have that ninja just go whoosh, go up really fast, and we're, what we're going to do is have the background move along with it. Okay, so what we'll do is get it up to well, probably about as far as it can go. Though our uh, our background stops right here, our, our viewer viewable area. So we'll get it. All the way up to that point, I guess. And uh, let's put a keyframe in between here now. Or, I mean, I should say a motion tween. So it's just going to go up like that. All right. And let's also uh, ease out that from happening. Okay. In fact, you know what? I might have it last just a little longer. Let's stretch that out at least one more frame. And let's also put a blur onto this. Because that will probably look pretty nice with those stars. All right. Uh, what we'll do is make this zero on the X and a bit more on the Y, okay. Something like, yeah, right around there probably. Okay, then what we'll do is about this many frames after that. Let's hit F6 again, and then let's just try to get this background into kind of a mid uh, position of, uh, of the overall thing. So just probably about like to there. And then uh, let's also motion tween that. At this point, though, let's uh, take the filter off. Or what we can do is set it back down to zero. OK. Uh, let's just kind of scrub through this slowly here. So it'll go up. And you know what? Actually, now that I think about this, maybe it's probably too abrupt if it goes up really fast and then down really fast. So let's do this. Let me just move it back over to, we'll just have it go down a little bit over this way. All right, so kind of uh, ninja will go blurring up that way really quick, 
then just another little bit of a beat kind of almost uh, a bookmark of what we had in the beginning here where you don't really see much going on and then it'll kind of re come into focus the blurring will get off and then what we'll do is all the way over this way let's hit f6 again and here we'll have uh, the background sail back down to kind of this point where the uh, where the edge of the uh, image is just at the edge of the screen there. Let's see how that'll go for us. Okay, I think that should work out pretty nicely. And let's put a little bit of easing onto this tween. So it comes down like so. Okay, let me, uh, let me watch through this. I know the uh, screen capture, okay. Yeah, that'll, that'll work nicely. Get something like that on your end, publish it out so you can see it in uh, you know actual time, and then what I'm going to do is just kind of uh, take this background off for right now because that eats up a lot of um, bandwidth otherwise. Recording bandwidth, I guess. Okay, at this point, let's hit F7, and let's call this layer... Um, About just more ninja stuff. <laughs> we'll wait to put it into a uh, folder later. All right, and you know, for right now, let's actually go and um, not worry about animating because we have to go and uh, do a little artwork creation here. Let's uh, go back and grab uh, just all these symbols right here in the very beginning. Just be sure you don't uh, select in the background. In fact, I'd lock that layer. And we don't need to worry about the shadow, so let's lock that up before we select and copy things. I'm just going to copy this guy and select this frame, paste him over there. Then I'm going to fold up this uh, folder one more time. And let's get it a view of 100%. Let's take a look at him. And let's think about this. Uh, he will be kind of uh, falling back down, I guess. So let's uh, give him kind of a dynamic pose. Okay. Uh, what I'll do is start by uh, duplicating the body. And this is yet another reason why it's a good idea to just continue on the file that we had before because our numbering for these duplicates will um, continue going on as they were in the past. And what we'll do is actually, I'm just going to copy drag out his body over here. You can do that by holding that control or option and uh, dragging it. And let's duplicate this. And what we'll do is split them in half here. Okay. So I'm just going to cut them right down the middle. And then, likewise, I'm just going to cut them down this way. And that will give us a little bit of uh, extra control in terms of uh, you know, these new positions that we're going to set up. Let's move that out of there temporarily. And, in fact, let's go and just take the head, move that out of the way. The, uh, the sword here, what we can do is make use of a symbol that is... Uh, Already in the library, it was in the start file, actually, in the uh, very beginning lesson. It's this uh, sword in hand. I'm just going to drag that out, and you can see exactly what that is. It is, of course, a hand holding a sword. I'm just going to flip it horizontally like that, maybe make it a little bit bigger. It's a bit small. Okay, so we got his hand kind of uh, held up this way, maybe an arm uh, doing kind of the same thing. And then we'll do one leg kind of up like this, and then another one just down. So let's uh, double click inside of here first. Can I uh, get rid of this line, that stroke that's uh, been on there? And let's just begin to pull this point as far up this way as we can. In fact, let's uh, just select and delete out that part, and we should get left with some point over this way that we can use to just kind of bring up like that. And remember, the head covers up pretty much this whole area anyway. Uh, same kind of deal over here. In fact, you know what? You might just want to delete out that whole part and uh, work with whatever point you get left with by doing that. Let's curve the body down some. In fact, I'm just going to chop it off too. There's really almost no point other than the fact that our filters are left attached to these symbols uh, versus just, you know, uh, creating another blue box and reshaping it out that way. 
But it does save us time. A lot of time, actually. Not having to put those filters back on. Okay, that should be all we need to do for this top part. Let's uh, zoom out a little bit. We can go ahead and put the head back on. And you know what? That is telling me that these arms need to come out a little bit more. I guess a little lesson to myself there. Keep the head on when drawing these guys. Okay, that should work. Uh, let's make the eyes a little bit more intent before he was kind of subtle. Uh, I'm going to duplicate them and just double click on inside. Almost sultry eyes. I'm just going to move this down. Let's move this pupil over to here. Sometimes a cross-eyed look ends up... I mean, it's a little goofy, but sometimes it actually makes people look kind of intent on something focused. I'm just going to select out the bottom of this and delete it. And do the same thing over here. Moving that point over. And I'm going to take these down just a little bit. Okay, something like that. Next up, these legs, we've already duplicated them so we can safely change them. And let's take this point, put it down here. And then this one leg, like I was saying, will make this go up this way. Let's uh, bring this down and let's bring that up even further. Setting up the body like uh, I did for this lesson, where we don't have too many moving po points, was uh, kind of a debate in my head whether or not that was going to be a good idea. But um, now that I've been playing around with this, I actually do kind of dig it. Um, I think it works kind of nice, and you get the get all this nice little continuous shading that you probably wouldn't get if you were just uh, you know having different parts for the knee and whatnot. Uh, let's. I know I have a few copies of this belt that are bent downward, so I'm just going to uh, swap a symbol out. You know, that's actually not something we've talked about too much. Get rid of symbol and then swap symbol. I have a hotkey of uh, Control G or Apple G and uh, gets you in here and then you can just kind of swap it out. It'll leave that symbol exactly where it is on the stage. All right, and just move that right over there. Maybe stretch it out just a tad bit. Okay, and then, of course, we can grab this little belt tie. By the way, um, one little thing to note that might actually help you guys out a bit, get really used to uh, using paste in place instead of just paste, because if I just pasted that, it would have put it right here. But... Um, I mean, this, before this was over here, right? It was actually behind the leg. So oftentimes what I'll do is instead of using the hotkeys to uh, make uh, the object uh, go back and forth like this, which actually requires two of my hands on the keyboard, usually what I'll do is leave the right hand on, the, uh, on my mouse and then I'll just cut it and then paste it in place. And it's the same um, copy and paste as you would... Uh, well, the pace is the same, but you just hold down the, the shift key instead of, uh, you know, not having it held down. Okay. I found that to be a big time saver. Just rotating this sword a bit. Let's actually make it go up even further. And I feel like it should be about this high up that way. So let's go and take this sleeve up a bit more. There we go. A little bit better. Uh, this is a black background, so this hand is really not going to get seen that much anyway. So let's just go and take the same fist, and we'll just pop it over here.
Maybe make it to get out to about there. All right, that's a nice uh, dynamic pose. Let's actually take his bandana, maybe. Oh, uh, well, you wouldn't see that on a black background, would you? Well, we'll leave it down like that, I guess. Oh, no. Hmm. You know what? Then it might look like his hand's getting cut. So forget that. I take it back. We'll just have it be back there. All right, this is a nice pose. Let's uh, select everything here, and we'll just uh, keep a little copy of it. So hit F8 or uh, convert it to a symbol. And we'll just call this uh, Ninja Falling Pose. I'm going to make it, uh, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to break it apart now. It seems pointless that I did that, but it's not really not because then you have a copy in the library that, it, you know, if you do something to this, you can always just drag out this copy and, and uh, break that apart again. Okay, and let's get him kind of centered up over here. All right, so like I was saying before, we're going to do a quick little loop of him, of his robes, just kind of, you know, fluttering in the in the wind, even though he's kind of jumped up in space here. We'll just say there's a little wind, too. And, uh, and that'll be maybe four or five frames, and that'll actually touch on something um, that I think really needs to get touched on. But let's do this for now. Let's just uh, first... Uh, put some keyframes up here on the main timeline, so just hit F6, and let's just really quickly adjust uh, the body, or both bodies here, the body and the legs, and uh, we'll, we'll start actually by making his head go down a little bit, just slightly, and let's see, let's make this go down, make this go down, maybe make this point move, have this come out this way. So we'll just kind of be moving everything down, and then we'll just move it right back up again. Or just repeat backwards the frames uh, from before. And let's rotate this just slightly. And you know, I come to think of it, for a pose like this, one of the more noticeable things that would be fluttering around would be uh, these loosely attached things like the bandana ties or his belt tie. So let me go and bring actually this one into the front. This is not something I did when I was just kind of playing around with this, but this might look a little bit better. So if we just uh, do the same thing on that first frame, let's get that over there. So if those are kind of whipping around wildly and then everything else subtly, that might look pretty good. So let's uh, rotate this up this way now. And by the way, if, in case you didn't see that, I did actually put another keyframe there. Uh, let's duplicate all the bodies. And we were bringing everything down a bit before, so let's keep doing that again. Maybe we could do some a little bit of subtle bending on these as well. Let's rotate this, bring it down. Rotate this, bring it down. Let's take the whole head down. Let's move that over there. All right, so let's scrub through this real quick. Uh, let's take the whole body, move it down a bit, and then the whole body on this one, move it down. So you get something like that happening. Hit F6, we'll do this a couple more times. Move it down, move it down.
And don't forget too, as you work through this on your own, play around. Feel free to pause the video and go off in some other directions if you want, just to see what happens. You can always clear out a keyframe and start back at the beginning. Alright, what did I forget? The head. Uh, the only thing that looks like it's not moving down is the belt. And I guess actually let's take the whole body down a little bit. That could be the problem. Okay, one more, let's move the whole body down first, then we'll take this, where did this bandana start at, let's see, okay, get that over there, let's send this over that way, and let's duplicate the bodies. Maybe now what I'll do is start to bring things back upwards. And probably at a faster rate than they move down. So let me go from this frame to that one. Okay, let's take one of these middle frames. I'm going to copy this one, paste it right here, and then and move, oops, move that tassel over there. Let's move this one over here. Okay, that might be a nice loop. We can check, of course, by uh, copying all the frames, and we are going to put them into a symbol of their own, which. Uh, we all remember we just had some problems with that in the last lesson but uh, we're gonna redeem ourselves here okay uh, so this will just be uh, let's call it ninja uh, falling loop I'm gonna make that a graphic clip by the way and let's go to loop playback I'm gonna sit down set this down to something kind of low so we can just kind of watch it Okay, that should work uh, pretty nicely for uh, falling down. We can experiment with doing some kind of uh, speed lines or blur lines back there, which might look kind of nice too. Now, so how are we going to make use of this uh, graphic clip, even though we know that we had uh, mucho problems with it before showing up if we wanted to export to a movie? Now, let me do remind you guys too that uh, if you're going to uh, just put this out to uh, the web, okay, then don't worry about uh, using those uh, graphic clips and, and the problems that we were having because we're just publishing out to an SWF and it looked fine then. Okay, it's only that problem where we, it's, it, you kind of have to, what you see is what you get up here on the main timeline if you're going to export out the video. But otherwise, if you know you're going to the web, then fine, use movie clips, graphic clips. Uh, actually, if you're going to go to the web, movie clips are usually play back quicker. Okay, so uh, that's something to consider. But let's do this. Let's uh, make another layer up here. I am going to go over here to the library and grab this guy. Okay, and let's drag out this frame to right here. Okay, and we'll just pop him right over top where we were animating the guy before. Uh, let's do this. Let's 
delete out that layer. All right. And as you can see, after a while, you get some weird uh, things going on. Now, what I noticed, because, uh, of course, I spent you know, some time baffled after the lesson that that occurred, but uh, what I noticed is that if we were just to select all these frames right here and hit F6, then suddenly we don't have the problem at all. Okay. Well, except on that very first frame, uh, which uh, we'll deal with that. In a second, but uh, generally we don't have that problem. All right, uh, let's just slide all that over there. Okay, uh, now how can we uh, use that? It seems kind of annoying too that we got all those frames right there. Well, what we could do, and let me just clear all these off first, is we could put a motion tween on here. All right, and let's uh, give ourselves a little bit more time. In fact, we're not going to have this guy falling down to about this point anyway, so I'm just going to move out that starting frame over there. What we'll do is move him up here and then create this motion tween. All right. So he's going to kind of fall down slowly like that. And we might even want to make it uh, a little slower and ease it out. So let's see, he's going to like. Let's actually just put him right in the center. Something like that will go on. All right. And uh, now what we'll just need to do, as long as you get the timing right, okay, and you, and you know, again, for a fact that you definitely get a, have to export out to a movie, then, then just uh, hit F6 on all those frames, and uh, you should be good to go. Uh, one thing I would do is just clear off the, the motion. All right, so just go to between none, okay. And uh, you should be good to export it out. Let's do this. Let's just see how this uh, looks. I know, actually, we're, of course, we are leaving out one little thing in the beginning where he just kind of shoots up. Um, well, so you know what? Actually, that's not a hard thing to do. Let's go ahead and just put it in. Uh, what we'll do is copy just one of these frames. Let's hit F7 over here. Paste them in. Make them a bit smaller, like maybe this size. And... Hit F6 over here, over here. I hit F7 over that way. And you know what? Let me put these frames right about here. Okay. And let's go and use one of those uh, uh, symbols that we had before because it was kind of nice. Uh, in fact, it was this one right here, that blur. So, what I'm going to do is unfold this layer and just select. Which one is it? It's that one, okay. So select that uh, frame, copy it, and then come back over this way. Just gonna scale it down. Move it over there. Uh, maybe flip it like this. Let's see. No, you know what? Don't flip it. I'm gonna just duplicate this. Call it Ninja Upwards, whatever three and let's get rid of the sword because we can just use the rest of that uh, blur that's in there and by the way these are the these don't look too great if you are using flash 7 <laughs> without that blur so don't do that all right so go up Sometimes with that background shown, it's, it's hard for me to uh, figure out exactly where on the stage we're at. Let me copy this, and on this frame, I'm going to put it over here as well. And let's put it over. Let's copy it from here, and then just put it right over here. And again, kind of like we did in the last file, let's just squeeze it in some and just have this, uh, kind of this trailing after image like that. And then hit F7. Okay. Now let's take a look at this. The frame rate down pretty slow so you guys can see it. He's going to start off doing his thing. Jump up. And do, 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 do. All right. That'll be quick. And then he's kind of easing into that position, falling down. Works for me. The background's kind of slowly fading down as well. Now he's just hovering there, but uh, we'll deal with that in a second. 
Okay, and uh, you know, take a look at this, uh, of course, on your own and with your own file, and uh, feel free to take a look at my uh, finished SWF file at any time. Uh, one thing I did actually notice with the video pause was that uh, he kind of appears out of nowhere here, so let's go and uh, copy one frame over this way and just put him kind of more up there. Uh, probably even we could do it one more time. Let's give ourselves a little bit more room in this space. So I'm just going to select all the layers and just hit F5 a couple times. So he'll kind of blast upward and then there's a bit more space here and then he'll uh, start to appear. So let's go and take this frame, copy that as well. Copy drag I should say. Not that there's really any difference. And on this one, let's, uh, let's play around with not blurring him because that's a graphic clip so we can't do that but uh, let's go and find this same blur right here I'll just paste that up top make it a bit bigger so we do something like that maybe take the alpha down slightly copy it paste it and let's do it one more time I do love these blurs don't I Okay, so we'll have this go on, and then what we can do is uh, start to start on a bit more real animation, not just these little loops of subtle stuff. Let's uh, make him flip around, and so let's give ourselves a bit more space over this way. You might not need it, but uh, I like to give us some room. Uh, at this point, let's hit F6 and just break him apart, because we'll start to do some real keyframe animation again. First thing, let's just duplicate this uh, lower half of the body here, and we'll just take this one leg down. He's going to start to rotate forward this way. We'll just have uh, that begin with this leg. It's a nice, easy thing to do. And as he flips downward, let's uh, also just get the whole body going down some. Keep in mind, everything uh, previous to this frame was just kind of wildly moving around. So let's keep that going as well. And let's kind of suck in his pajama pants a little bit more. There we are. And you know, let's also get the uh, arms moving forward, or at least outward. You know what, I'm also going to just rotate the entire body slightly. Let's go even further with it. Okay, uh, hit F6. Let's go ahead and get another keyframe down here. Uh, this time, let's move the head quite a bit more. In fact, you know what, we might be able to try to think we should steal some of the frames that we already had here. But we're going to do something similar to this, but let's just, uh, we'll just stay with what we got here. Because we have changed the eyes, I guess, somewhat significantly. We'll start there. Let's duplicate the eyes and we'll want to start to see less of them. Also duplicate this guy's bandana. So just arcing that downwards. Uh, one thing we could actually do for the eyes, which I didn't really think of before, 
it's just selecting everything here. Okay, and then, in fact, you know what? Uh, to get this, no, I'll leave the eyes as here. I'm sorry. Select everything, and then just go to your free transform tool, and then click on uh, envelop right here. And then you can just pull down this and pull down this like so. I want to move this upward. So you get these nice little bezier handles for moving things around, and then the uh, the pupils will have to just adjust if you want to make them still visible. They don't get affected by that. As he starts to tilt his head down, let's uh, just make it a little bit fatter. Okay, now at this point, the legs will start to go underneath the main body here. So let's just move them all the way backward. Uh, you're probably going to see a lot less of the belt. And you know what, let's just move them out of the way for right now, so we're not even considering them. Move this off to the side, and uh, let's take his belt off. There we go. Okay, uh, do be sure that you've duplicated the bodies. And this arm, let's move down this way more. And start to see his body in perspective. So we'll kind of be seeing a bit more of the, the chest and the shoulders up here. All right, so we're going to get more weight to them. And then down by his belly, we're going to see less of that. So basically, we're just kind of tucking all this inward. And uh, since this arm is coming. Uh, you know, forward, and we're kind of viewing him more off at this uh, um, from this side, from this quarter degree turn. What we can do is um, actually scale upward this hand, and uh, and also doing that, we can make this whole sleeve kind of more in perspective like that. And I guess the opposite is kind of true over here. I mean, we could take this arm and put it back like that, so you see less of it. But uh, let's just go with it, kind of like this. We'll do enough of that with the legs, I think. Let's get back over here, and let's, like I was saying, scale up this whole thing. And in doing so, let me scale back out here. Let's uh, duplicate the sword hand. So we'll get a second copy of that. And let's start to tilt the whole sword down. So let's just uh, zoom in here. This little uh, plate, the sword guard, I'm not sure what that's called. I'm just going to uh, scale it downward like that, okay? And you know what it seems like? It seems that inside of this symbol I have a, uh, a stroke shape that I probably should have uh, taken out, or not taken out, but done uh, convert lines to fill. So I'm going to go ahead and do it right now. And, ooh. well, just going to move this down a bit. If you're going to be scaling something, to have a, a stroke in there like that is a little, it can do some kind of odd things. So that's why we're doing that. Uh, if uh, this sword is coming toward us like this, uh, you're going to probably not see this little brown part under the handle here. And uh, in this particular symbol, that has actually its own symbol. So let's just take that on out. And you'll see a bit less of this handle too as this hand comes toward us. You can even scale it down some as well. Now the sword itself, the blade, uh, this gets a bit trickier. Uh, let's duplicate the blade as well. So it'll just be blade copy and double click inside of here. Select everything, grab the free transform tool, and then we're going to grab the distort subtool of that. And uh, with that selected, just uh, come up here to the top. I'd probably start by holding down the shift key so you, it uh, kind of skews out both of those sides equally. And then let's just bring this down like so. Okay. And let me get back out here. And even though this is kind of half complete, let's just take a look at what's going to be happening here. Just going back and forth between the two frames. Yeah, it's a kind of I mean, it's a kind of big move, but you know, I think it works. Okay, so let's get this hand uh, into position. And now for the 
belt. Actually, let's first adjust this little shadow here. You can probably get away with just leaving this as is and just uh, tilting it. But let's make sure that it is um, visually behind the body there. We probably don't even need to see, you know, it totally wrap around. You can probably just get away with just getting a little glimpse of it on this one side. I think that's fine. Let's uh, let's move this ooh, maybe over here. And for the legs, let's get that them back in place. As cool as that kind of looks with them tilted forward, we're gonna change these, of course. And let's just do this. Let's go. Moving this point over here, okay, and then let's take this, move it up like that. So it's kind of like this is the knee there, and then let's move that over there. So it's it's almost kind of like he's kneeling down, and let's just make it so that we can see a little bit of his. Uh, the bottom of the leg. So I'm just going to drag a point out this way, curve that like so, and then I'm going to put another point over that way. I'm going to curve this over here so I get like this thing happening. And instead of actually drawing a stroke right here, I mean kind of what I want to see is something like that. But instead of doing that, I'm going to make use of those drop shadow filters and just get something like this happening, okay? Because when you do that, I think it adds a nice little softening to it. And again, if this is on a white background, let's see, you kind of see through that, but we're gonna make use of the fact that, oops, uh, we know the color of the background, it's black, so we'll just go with uh, being able to see through there, I think that's okay. And what else? Let's maybe move that whole thing up just a tad bit, or rotate it like so. I want this to kind of feel, you know, like a nice little, it's got a nice little angle to it. And we could do something, in fact, to make that look a little bit better by doing this. Let's pull the same trick over here. So I'm going to pull that in and then arc that. Okay, mm, you can, I think you can see it too much over there, though. Let's see through it. It has to be kind of close together line, but. When it works, it works well. Okay. Let's uh, zoom out a bit. Okay, now, uh, what to talk about? We could probably go for scaling his head up just a tad bit. Although, you know what? Actually, we did do that. So let's do this. Let's go and just move him down some. Maybe rotate him like that. Okay, so he just falls down, and he's going to go into that position. Let's take him down just a little bit more, because he's got plenty of room here to just kind of flip out on, on the bottom, or flip toward us. Okay, F6, let's move him down even further now. And before we forget, let's just go and uh, duplicate. Oops, well, not that symbol, but uh, the other ones, the bodies. Get them all there. Okay, and this should be kind of simple. We're just going to bring the head down ever more. Let's zoom in a bit. Uh, these eyes... Uh, uh, you know what, really, we shouldn't, I guess, kind of see them if we keep this head moving forward like this. But uh, it looks a little weird when it's just all black there. So let's try to keep them on for a bit longer. Let's do adjust this bandana one more time, though. So I'm just going to move that down there. And we'll move that down. Uh, we'll duplicate it. Let's see if we can get away with doing that same thing we did before, where we just kind of bring that down. And then I think after this turn, we'll, we'll have to give up on seeing them. 
Okay, let's keep this thing kind of moving around. Just flip it horizontally. Uh, let me do this, though. That little hump right there. Let's get rid of that. Okay, now let's keep the arms moving downward or down and forward to us. Let's take a look at the previous frame. As for the sword, let's get it in the position, then we'll worry about adjusting it. I'm going to rotate it this way slightly, actually just get it kind of straight up. Uh, maybe scale it just a bit. Let's duplicate this. And this little sword guard, whatever that is called. Move that over there. Move this up like so. Let's move this up a bit. And then let's duplicate this one more time. Same exact deal. Select the whole thing. Just go to distort. Let's uh, hold down shift as we drag these out. And go forward like that. If you want to make it a little bit more pointy, you can do that too. Kind of weird looking at it like that, but hey, you know what? It's just one frame. Let's turn. It takes one frame to turn it into a banana. Now, well, we can go. I'll I'll just squeeze it in just a tad bit more. Let's see. That's fine. We could blur it too. Actually, that wouldn't be a bad idea to do. Oh, right now, uh, let's do this. Let's copy it first. Paste it over here, and. Let's blur a copy, which we'll put underneath. I think oftentimes that ends up looking a bit better. So we can kind of keep it, this all nice and clear on top, but then just have that going on in the background. Okay. You know, by the way, I did forget to do one thing. I, I did want to put on here uh, some stuff getting blurred. So what we'll do is we'll finish up uh, this one frame, and then we'll go back and change that. It's a really easy fix, actually. Okay, so let's get back in here. Uh, we have moved the body. I think, though, we need to be seeing less underneath this way and uh, kind of get the impression that we're just looking, well, if this was a guy walking, we'd be, like, looking straight down at him with his arms out. So actually, even though the body's covering it up, we'll just kind of pretend like we can see this back part over here. Okay, because you'd be seeing kind of just straight down on the guy. You know what? This is being, this has become unruly. Let's just uh, delete it and go in there like that. Uh, let's move this little tassel just totally back behind there. Let's get rid of the belts. We're not going to be able to see that. This shadow, let's kind of just move it over there so we don't forget about it. And then the legs, let's just put them back there like that. We won't even uh, worry about changing them this time around. Okay. Uh, one thing, this arm, though, does need to come out a bit further. And let's do this. Let's also make things a little looser. Just curve that downward that way. And it's kind of arm poses like this that, that uh, where there's this kind of just straight kind of cone. Make it feel a little bit too much like it's a Mega Man type guy and not so much a ninja. Might be too late to fix it on a lot of these images, though. 
Never mind, we're just, it's Mega Man. <laughs> Let's go back and put a few more blurs on this thing. We can leave the ones that we already put in the beginning here. Those actually look pretty nice, but we'll just kind of end up doubling them up because what we can do is even though we've keyframed all these frames, uh, this graphic clip is, um, is it's just looping through the same five frames. So if we just go and double click inside of here and put a new layer in, okay, what we can do is just uh, paste in that same blur that I copied and we'll just put it on all of these, okay? And I think the key here will just be to uh, hit F6 afterwards, just maybe flip it around or flip it vertically. Just kind of keep it centered up no matter what you do with it. So I'll flip it that way and magically when we come back to the main timeline again let's see how it's looking it will uh, be on every one of those frames let me do this I'm gonna loop playback so we can just kinda of take a look here okay I think that's fine and that should also look uh, nice because it'll be a little bit more of a visual marker when this guy, when he's kind of falling down here and then begins into his like little flip like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see if we hit F6 yet. Nope, we have not. Let's go ahead and do that. Oops, too far. There we go. Okay, let's move the whole head down. Let's move this shadow backwards now. I'd even scale it up just a little bit. It's not so much a shadow, I guess, at that point. It's just kind of a uh, showing us the uh, I don't know some difference or something like that in his body tone. <laughs> uh, go ahead and just take the eyes off at that point, and let's uh, do this as well. That this bandana actually has a drop shadow on it. Let's take that off. Or, you know, instead of taking it off, maybe we can just uh, uncheck it over here. So it's just not visible. And then uh, uh, be sure it is duplicated one more time. And let's go just send it down like so. Okay. This, let's make sure it's actually behind the head now. And as for the legs, let's move them over there temporarily. And this sword let's go ahead and flip vertically like that let's take that off for right now we might bring it back though and then as for the oh yeah let's duplicate this let me just go ahead and duplicate this other body as well at the same time and let's adjust to this so that we're going to move in uh, now we'll actually be seen as back okay might need to end up doing is um, kind of scrubbing through the timeline and taking a look at these arms and just making sure that they're, they're not really flailing. I kind of want to make it seem like he's, you know, got a bit of control to this uh, flip he's doing. But I'm going for a pose something like this. And I'm I think I'll probably bring the head back up just a tad. Okay, so it's just like a little, I don't know. Let me try uh, swapping this symbol out for the one that we had before, like that. And let's go back a couple frames. Okay, just falling down. Let's take the whole body, move it down some. Well, the only thing is, is that both arms seem to have gotten a lot longer and and wider there. So 
let's just squeeze them in a tad bit. Yeah, the, the, both of them are just too far out there. That's oftentimes something that happens when you're, you know, you start the animation with one <laughs> body's in one state, and then by the end of it, you know, totally different. Kind of wouldn't mind going back to one of my other other hands. Well, that's okay. That that looks all right. It's amazing how you can make one uh, fist work for 20 different poses. If it's just black, <laughs> you can just kind of arrange it anyway. Okay, uh, ch ch the belts. Let's get the belt back. I'm going to copy that. Paste this over here. I think on his way toward us, he might be getting a bit fatter too, so let's just make sure we squeeze this in. I'm going to uh, range this behind him. Okay. And just put that belt tie back there as well. Okay, these legs, uh, I think we've already duplicated. I'll just do it one more time, just in case I forgot. Uh, what to do here? Well, uh, I'll just kind of put them right there and then just double click on in, although we're going to be making some drastic changes. In fact, I'm just going to delete out so much here that we kind of end up back with just a plain square. And let's send this backward like so. You know what, let's try this. Let's make it so that we can see this one leg and then we'll just kind of do it like his little butt here, like that. Too much butt, I think. <laughs> Too cheeky. I'm going to copy this, duplicate it, and then take the butt out. Okay, so I just have a leg. Curve this a bit more. Okay, it does, it kind of works. It's just that what I need to do is zoom in here, move this over here, kind of move the whole, you know, it, that little, you know, the middle of his cheeks here is kind of the center of his body. So if that's off to like one side over here, it's not going to look like he's got just a kind of continuous spine going through him. You know, we don't want something like that, you know. And then what we can do here is let's just move this all the way over there and then just put that thin little, you know, gap. And that should, let's see, yeah, get something nice like that going on. And let's take a look at the frame before. Okay, is he, let's see. That's confusing me. Let me move this down like so. And let's actually take his whole head and move it up some. I'm going to get rid of this little gap right here. So I'm just going to snap this together. I 
got a little opening there too. That's no good. Let's get rid of that. Okay. What I'm going to do here is duplicate this sword and just make it so that this is not so big. There we go. Maybe get rid of the handle. Okay, let's just take the whole body, move it down a little. Well, it's falling forward nicely. That's good, at least. Oh, time for another keyframe. Hit F6 over this way. And let's start by actually taking this bandana, moving it off. I'm going to move the head down even further. And then let's uh, make it uh, seem like uh, we're moving some of the light around as well. So I'm just going to adjust the, uh, the yeah, this drop shadows angle right there. You know, that's actually such a nice little thing to, to do. Let's do it on a, the frame before it as well. Yeah. Let's do it. There we go. Something like that. And let's go a little further there. Let me skew this head just a little bit that way, maybe even, there we go, just round it out a bit more. It was getting kind of into that egg shape, although, let's see, how do we start that head? Oh, it is kind of an egg, so whatever. <laughs> For this bandana, let's uh, duplicate it, zoom in, and I'm just going to... Make it seem like we're going to see the back of it. Let's move that over there. Oh, I, I got to add another vector point. It's not moving right. Sometimes these ultra simple shapes can get a little quirky on you if you don't have enough vector points. I'm going to create another layer and just grab a circle, just put a big old circle right here. And that'll just be kind of where the bandana is tied together in the back. And that way we can just take this and then move it right back over there. We get something like that going on. Uh, now let's see. Let's, let's move these legs up over here. Let me, uh, oops. Let me duplicate the body. And let's bring these arms back this way You know, for a few poses here, let's uh, reunite kind of the body with the legs just so we start to get that um, feeling that he's not so disjointed. Because after a while, that's, that's kind of the impression. So what I'll do is uh, I'm just going to copy these two shapes, or should I even? Well, let's try this. We put this leg over here and this leg over here. I'm just going to use these to kind of uh, get the correct size and spacing. But I'm going to copy them and then just double click inside of here and then paste them on in. They might shrink up a bit, so that's why I did that. And then just put them right here and then break them apart. And of course, when I break them apart, they just go back to being. Uh, that uh, blue again, and then what we can do is just kind of pull that into here, pull this down, pull this down, pull this down. And 
Let's make one leg a little bit longer than the other. Okay, let's, let's get rid of this and this. And let's think. I'm going to actually get rid of that shadow. Well, not get rid of it, just move it down a bit. And then we don't need that. Let's take his belt, get his belt back on. So just paste this uh, right up on top. Let's uh, duplicate it. Bring that down there. Okay, get his little tie. duplicate or no let's uh, swap this out for one of the symbols we've already made probably this one right here and squeeze it in just a little bit yeah I'm gonna actually put it behind the body okay let's move them down The only thing I want to do, curve this in some and then curve that like so. Oops, that was my machine. And same thing for this arm right here. Let's just uh, make it a little curvier. You know what, I, I do like this kind of sharp point down here at the bottom. So let's keep that going, at least on one of these legs. Probably this one. And then one more thing. Being a bit of, of a perfectionist here, I know. Let's just move that down. Oh, line there. Okay. And last up, let's just center the head a little bit more. Okay. Let's uh, go ahead and hit F6. All right, let's duplicate everything that needs to be duped. Body and, well, that'll do it for now. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and swap out the sword for, actually, our original sword. So it's just kind of uh, straight up and down like that, not in perspective. As for this head, let's go, well, let's move this, the angle of the shadow around one more time. We'll go over here. Probably doesn't make much sense that the light source is changing, but that's okay. Uh, let's send it actually behind the body. Okay, so it's going to go all the way back there. And you know what? We can go ahead and flip the bandana as well. Okay. So we're going to get something like that going on. And you know what? I take it back about moving that thing. Now that I'm seeing that, let's, let's do, undo that. Let's get it back over there. Uh, let's take this off for right now, and let's deal with the belt. Let's flip that like so. No, you know what? Let's duplicate it, and oh, I just... Uh, let me cancel that. Do it again. There we go. This is going to end up being kind of a straight belt like this. And actually, since we're almost just viewing this guy just upside down, but from a normal angle again, very uh, not not so much in perspective, I should say, uh, we can get back to getting him uh, kind of into his original shape, okay, where he wasn't this kind of wide. 
so let's do this. Let's think about that. Remember when he began, he had a little bit more of an hourglass thing going on. What we might want to do is actually take a look at uh, one of his earlier poses just to see if we got that about right. Well, since we're going to kind of loop back into this pose, let's let's reference it with this one right here. Let me just break that apart. Let's see. Okay, we're not too far off. You could get a little thinner, and but well, that, that's okay. All right, move out of the way. the belt in a little bit. Move that over there. Put this hand somewhere. Let's just put it right there. Throw that back there. Okay, that was actually a pretty easy one. Uh, we could actually use this shadow for... What could we use it for? Maybe right there. Uh, let's also try to copy and just paste it and put it Kind of in his lower back region here. Yeah, I think that works. M might have gotten him a little too skinny from this frame to the next. Let's go and uh, just widen him out just a little bit. to mess around with the belt now too. Oh, and you know what? We didn't really change the legs much on this as well. That, that could be it's kind of throwing us off too. Okay, yeah, that's a problem. Let's do this. Get back into here, and these legs are kind of coming back around in this motion, like swooping that way. So if anything, they're kind of coming into perspective a bit. Like that. Let's rotate it. Okay, the head's just not really centered, so let's get that over there. That should work out. Okay, and let's hit F6. All right, coming up is probably one of the harder poses because uh, this guy is still bending, but uh, we're kind of, you know, looking, I don't know, this is a weird angle, so let's just try to get it to it. Uh, let's start by moving the head. We're going to move it up this way, 
and let's take this part let's just rip that off for right now uh, we will well, maybe we could leave that under there let's get all this stuff over this way uh, duplicate the body of course don't forget to do that let's uh, move the sword over this way in fact I think we got a few symbols just kind of lingering around here too much Okay, uh, we'll start by uh, altering the body here. This leg is going to kind of, we're going to keep it coming around. Okay, so let's just move it down like this. But uh, we're going to get into a situation where we kind of almost just absolutely have to show that, you know, just the, um, I guess, through the robes into this little area. So let's just try to change colors. And what's a good color for this? How about... Okay, that, that'll probably work. This is, if you want to type it in, it's uh, 3C3391. Oops, there we go. And if we were showing this guy's feet, you would definitely see them at this point. So it's kind of a weird bend like that. By the way, this is up on a, uh, a different layer there. Let's grab a stroke and just make it a black stroke. Let's go up one more layer, and uh, just so this is kind of becoming a little bit more clear for you guys. What's going on there? You would see some sort of line like that. Okay. And let's just move this down. We're actually going to do the same thing, I think, for this uh, other leg. So let's go ahead and sample that color again and go on the same layer. Remember, too, that the uh, the frame before this one was showing that this leg was going to start bending that way. So, Okay, the arms. Let's make it so... Let's see. Let's make this arm come in a bit this way. Might actually help to uh, get an idea of where that belt is. So let's get back up here to the main timeline again, and we'll just grab one of our current belts, flip it horizontally, and duplicate it. So it's kind of like this whole little region here is it, like his butt. <laughs> Maybe we can make that a little bit more obvious. Let's see. Just pulling that under and then this coming out. Like so. Uh, it might be a good place for this little shadow to come in. Although we definitely didn't have that in the frame before. Um, but let's see. Yeah, it could work. Let's get these arms kind of swinging around a bit more here. Okay, it's a, it's a pretty good pose. Let's uh, bring this up this way. Oops, there it is. Uh, as for his bandana on the top, I 
think we're not going to see much of it. Maybe we could do is just take this like little belt tie here and just put it right under there. So you just kind of get the idea that maybe you'd be seeing part of that mask. I mean the bandana. And uh, hands. Let's scale this down a little bit. Maybe let's go back into this leg and just adjust this part right here a bit more. I'm going to grab the ink bottle tool. I will try filling that in. Let's see what happens. Is it too much? We'll, uh, we'll go with that. Let me just make this a little less thick. There we go. Okay. Uh, just stroke of one I think is fine. Now let's try something else here. Uh, lock all the layers except for these things right here. And uh, so just make sure that you're working in there. Grab a line and just cut it right through the middle. Okay, and then just bend that shape. And let's make this part uh, a little bit darker inside of here. So with the uh, color mixer open, that is of course right there. Let's go and make it just a tad darker. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot better. I actually ended up deleting the stroke around that circle, but that's okay, because I, now I think it works. And we'll do the same thing here. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Good stuff. Uh, now we got the problem with the sword. This is a interesting angle because the handle is now for uh, more toward us than the blade. So let's uh, copy this symbol out again, and actually let's position it correctly. Like a, something like that. So let's go in here. Let's move the sword back. We'll just try scaling it down for now. And let's take his hand. Let's see, where would his thumb be here? I guess it would still just be somewhere in that region. We'll just kind of try to show this little part of the fist. Uh, this part right here, you wouldn't see. Uh, this part would now, of course, be behind that. Probably more circular. Uh, this would be on top. Let's duplicate this symbol, handle, and just go in here, make it kind of come out like that. Let's grab a circle, uh, sample this color right here, and sample that exterior color. Let's just get this and put it right over top there. And if you're going to do that, go ahead with the color mixer. Just make this a little bit of a darker brown. Oh, you know what? Got to have this one selected. Okay, uh, because the angle of that sword looks a little weird, let's go and maybe we'll just cheat it by blurring it out some. We'll try something like that. Okay, now let's move this over there. Okay, that <laughs> gets a little too big. Let's uh, let's try just scaling it like that. Okay. Let's move the whole body down a little bit. I think the head can actually move up a bit too. Okay, probably we, we can get away with maybe just doing one more pose and then looping back around to this one. So we should kind of keep that in mind as well, but by maybe, let's see, copying this pose, we're just copy dragging out this frame over to here, okay, and let's bring it down. So 
we can kind of get ready. We know we got to flip them around back to this pose, at least in one, maybe two other keyframes. Let's thumb through this here. Okay. Uh, yeah, should work. Okay, fortunately, this keyframe, this pose, I should say, is not the hardest one in the world to do. But um, you know what? Uh, I just keyframed that, and actually what I should have done is just drug this one over to the previous frame. All right, so we're going to modify this now. All right, so we're just going to go from this, modify it, and move on. We'll loop it a few times. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit. What are we going to do here? Let's take this head, move it behind uh, the body here. We can take this off. Uh, let's flip this uh, like so. We'll move that up that way. The eyes, let's duplicate them, bring them upward. And this is relatively simple. Just double click inside of here and zoom in. The free transform tool, just uh, move that downward, move this up. Down. There we go. So you just get something like that going on. And let's see. For the body, just be sure you uh, duplicate both legs and uh, body now. Okay. And uh, this head's a little off center. Okay. Let's see. The sword, let's scale this just a little bit like that and then move it over here. Just kind of give us a good idea of where we're going to get that, uh, get this sleeve off to. So we'll go down this way with like that. Okay, let's uh, let's move the body out just a little bit. So this isn't going to be a sharp perspective, but it uh, will be a slightly occurring. There we go. And as for this belt, let's flip that upside down. Let's zoom in here. Let's move that like so. Uh, let's see. These legs, what should we do here? In fact, you know what? Let's do this. Let's uh, copy, or actually leave them there for a second, and then uh, just double click inside of here, paste them on in. So let's just get them sized up right. We'll kind of merge the legs back into the body for this. So we get one continuous shape. Uh, just break it apart. That is, of course, break apart right there. There we go. And what we'll do is let's cut off the bottom here. Cut off this. We do want these legs to be in perspective. Or sharp perspective, I should say. So we'll get like a kind of bell bottom thing going on. And let's uh let's get back over here, just delete off this stuff. Let's find the frame before. Double click inside of here. Just copy these two shapes. Oops. Just copy both of them. And then let's jump forward again. And what we'll do is paste them into here. I'm going to flip this uh, vertically and horizontally. Just get that laid out like so. Okay. And uh, you know what? Before I commit to putting it on this layer, let me just. Actually, I should just say, put it at a layer above. If I were to drop it, it would just cut through that shape underneath, and I don't necessarily want that. Let me lock this layer, and there we go. Okay. Let's 
rotate them just slightly like that. It's kind of a big movement, but it's all right. We, we're definitely running out of time in this lesson. And of course, you could always do some filler keyframes in here by maybe just moving the head down and then on a frame after it, moving the head slightly up more and then just maybe scaling it like I just did. But this should actually work okay. Let's um, zoom out just a little bit. We'll just scrub through here. So this is our starting frame. Falls down. Comes back, flips around like that, and then he ends up back at this pose. So that it's a nice little loop. What we can do now is let's put just a blank keyframe right here. Actually, right here, okay? And that'll just be our marker for uh, just grabbing all these frames, okay? Copying them, copy them, and then start right here, select both layers, and then just paste those frames back in there, okay? And uh, obviously, this is quite a jump between these two, but what we can do is just take all these frames following this blank keyframe and then just shift them down. To do that, what we're going to need to do is lock all the other layers and then grab the Edit Multiple Frames button that is right there, okay? And you get these little uh, these handles up here at the top of the timeline. You want to move them to uh, within this starting frame and then the ending frame here. And just be sure that you then go to Select All. You want to make sure you select every symbol within those uh, within those keyframes, all of them. And then we're just going to move that down. And you might have to do this a couple times to get it right. Let's see, I moved it down. Maybe I could go a little bit more. So let's uh, do that one more frame. But you can see now, so he kind of does his flip, and then he ends up back over there. And he's going to keep flipping around. Let's do this one more time. I find this is usually easier if you just copy drag them over that way. Okay. And same deal. Let me clear this out. Just got to keep track of where it begins at. Okay, so I'm going to start here and then just select all, go down a bunch. And let's do it one more time. Okay, and then finally, of course, we'll get. Oh, did I have more than one of these? Okay, you know what? I actually had this frame on here twice. Uh, what I'll just do then is select all these frames and then just drag them over one. Got to make sure I didn't do that same mistake over here. It looks like I didn't. Okay, that's fine. And then on this final frame, what we'll do, let's just hit F6 a few times. Uh, maybe we can curve his sword a little bit or something as we go down. And, you know, we could also duplicate the body too. So we'll make this one arm go up just slightly. Just so a little something's occurring at the end here. And one more. That'd be a good place too for those blur uh, symbols. Let's get one more of them. Let's see where they at. Oh, they're up here. Uh, looks like I grabbed the whole thing. I just want to break apart that and get only this part. Okay. Uh, let's do this now. I'm going to actually drag out this frame all the way to the end of this. I'm going to ease it out uh, even more, so at 100%. And I think that should look pretty good for um, exporting this out. Let's uh, let's test it. I'm going to knock this down to uh, three frames per second. Let's just see what happens. Let me make this a little smaller. zips up and let's see so he's gonna come back down and 
And there he goes. Flipping out. And he'll do it one more time and then bye bye. Okay. I think it looks pretty nice. And uh, what I'd suggest doing is uh, maybe even uh, exporting it out to a QuickTime file and, and just see how that looks. Um, Flash will occasionally drop uh, frames if it's uh, having trouble with the playback of something. So QuickTime will always give you the uh, a true 15 frames per second. And let's see. Uh, well, I've already showed you guys how to put all this stuff in the layer, so let's just close this down and uh, we'll pick things back up in part three and we'll figure out what to do next.